nutshell. Let's get some more now. The chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Republican Congressman Ed Royce of California, is still with us. Uh, did the president do the right thing? The price that was paid for the freedom of Alan Gross, and you're happy Alan Gross is back in the United States, was it worth it? Well, the question here in the negotiation was, did we get enough for the people of Cuba in the negotiation? In the past, when we've negotiated like this to open up the system, Vietnam, for example, or China, there's been one thing we've asked. There's only two countries that have still held out on this. One's North Korea and one's Cuba. We've asked that, all right, you allow your workers to be paid and receive the check when a firm comes in or you know when they work for example in a hotel what happens in cuba is that a hundred percent of the of the check from a foreign company goes to the government goes to raul castro's account basically or the kim account in north korea and five percent of it goes to the worker so uh, the reason we've we've opened up with vietnam and opened up with beijing is they agreed in in tough negotiations to open that system to empower their workforce. That has not been done in Cuba. And but what you're going to hear is a humanitarian concern about the fact that we've given a lot for very little in terms of, of human rights. But when President Nixon opened the door to China in the early 70s, the Chinese government had not agreed to any of those steps. There was a brutal communist regime there, but Nixon wanted to, to have breakthrough between the United States and China, and we've seen how this relationship has developed over these decades since then. The question, did President Obama do the right thing today to say, what, it hasn't worked for 50 years, there's still a brutal, repressive regime in Cuba, let's try something else? Wolf, the, the reality is that Cuba, is the, the government right now is on the ropes. It's on the ropes. They are very anxious to do this because with all of the problems that befall their their own economy because Venezuela, communist Venezuela, is now with the price of oil collapsing, unable to support Cuba. Now was the time to negotiate for a tougher deal. My concern, again, is that in the past when we've entered these negotiations, we have gotten something on the other side of the ledger. In Beijing, step by step, we got something on the other side of the ledger. I don't think what we have got at this point really is, is a good negotiation. We've, we've tr traded, you know, uh, three of their spies and this largesse and, and this this opportunity for them in exchange for very little. Well, the U.S. did get uh, Alan Gross and this U.S. spy who had spent 20 years. This is, is a spy that, is that the, the director of national intelligence today said uh, told the United States about American government workers who were spying for Cuba, who were ultimately arrested, sent to jail for espionage on behalf of Cuba. This guy spent 20 years in a prison in Cuba. Now he's here in the United States. Th this is a foreign asset who's now in the United States, and it's it's good that uh, that he's. You're happy he's back. I'm happy he's back, I'm, happy he's back and I'm certainly so, glad also. And the price that our... the U.S. paid, though, was it worth it? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, well, in reality, when you go into these negotiations, get something that really makes the negotiation worth it. At the end of the day, uh, what would have been worth it, what would have been worth it is to get Cuba to open its system so that workers are paid directly and the, and the government isn't if, paying them as little so as five. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, the, if that happens, yeah. if there's an easing of the oppression, remember, Raul Castro, Fidel Castro, they're well into their 80s right now. There's a new generation of Cuban leaders that are sitting out there in the wings. We don't know what the new generation, the new leadership is going to do. But if, in fact, this step by President Obama today improves the lives of Cubans, eases the repression, improves the relationship between Cubans and Americans, it will have been worth it. If we get this other step that I've just suggested, where the workers are empowered to actually get their paychecks directly, and the money doesn't go into the account which is spent to subvert governments in Latin America and Central America. I'm just back from Latin America and Central America. I've seen the damage Cuba's done by funding revolution in South America and in Central America. So, so if all of that can come to pass, then we're on the right road, but we've undercut our ability to leverage it. Let me play a little clip. Yes. The, the ca Canadian government, probably our closest ally, Canada, they played a critically important role. For years, Canada has had full diplomatic commercial relations with Cuba. The Vatican also played a significant role behind the scenes in getting this dialogue between the President of the United States, Raul Castro, this 45-minute phone conversation they had yesterday. A spokesman for Pope Francis... Greg Burke, the senior communications advisor to the pontiff, he spoke to CNN earlier today, and he elaborated on what was going on. I'll play the clip. 
Pope Francis, with that letter, uh, and with the spirit, I'd say, got it going. Pope Francis is all about building bridges. It's what he calls the culture of encounter. Uh, I'm sure not everybody in the U.S. is happy with what's happened here. There's no doubt about that. We've already seen that. And yet, uh, he says it's always better to be talking than not talking, and that, that's really what this was about. You disagree with the Pope? It's good to be talking. It's good to be talking. But this is about more than just the dialogue, right? This is also about bringing foreign exchange into Cuba, which will go to the account controlled by Raul Castro. Because he believes, the Pope, that if you have a dialogue, maybe things will get better. For 50 years, without that dialogue, it's been brutal. I'm, uh, maybe it'll get better. Here, we can the, sign off on the dialogue part of this without signing off on the rest of the agreement. You're the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, so you oversee the State Department. That's correct. Uh, the president wants full diplomatic relations. There's a U.S. diplomatic interest section in Havana right now. There's a Cuban interest section here in Washington. He wants an embassy. Embassy here, embassy there, an ambassador, not just a representative. Are you with him on that? Well, remember, the president didn't negotiate this through the State Department. He did this through the White House. This was done separately at the State Department, which will be an issue within the State Department. So I'm just adding another uh, layer of complexity. His deputy national security doing. advisor, Ben Rhodes, was the liaison, was, but I'm sure he yeah. was coordinating with the State Department and John Kerry. I'm sure he, I'm sure he coordinated somewhat. But what, what I have heard is that this was not done through state. This was done through the White House. So there, there, there is that issue as well. Uh, I'm sure we're going to take a look at uh, the negotiations. You know, you know what we would like to see. We would like to see the workforce in Cuba All right. empowered. You, you've right. suggested that Cuba, the regime in Cuba is really no different than the regime in North Korea. It is different, but it is exactly identical in the sense that the Kim family and the Castro family get managed to get their their hands on all of the funds running through the accounts that they control and they use it for their security apparatus and that's why you see some of the cuban american community who have who have fled cuba say do you understand the number of political arrests every month i mean there have been over six thousand this year of new political prisoners now they say well we're going to we're going to you know let fifty three of them go well they arrest more than that every month Hence the emotion about trying to negotiate something here for the Cuban people. So your bottom line is that the president made a blunder today, is that what you're saying? He did not negotiate tough enough today. And uh, my hope is going forward we become tougher negotiators.